Well, we're still at the St. George uh, Color Country Model Railroad Open House. Right. And uh, today we're looking at two of our favorite garden railroads. Right, and that's not it going by. That would be my <laughs> home away from home anymore. I'd love to build a garden railroad <laughs> out in a place like this. But this, so is, this is what we're looking at. This is Dick Saunders' uh, railroad. And what I love here is it's built into terraces that are retaining wall terraces. It was all uh, put in as part of the house when they constructed the house. So these terraces were built and boy, does that make for a great model railroad. Well, so much so it was an inspiration for us to build ours sort of this way. So this wasn't feasible for us, but uh, what we did is built an elevated railroad uh, out of wood. But boy, I love this terraced idea. I do too, it's really neat. We have many different lines of trains, not necessarily all the same line. So you might see a Southern Pacific, you'll see a, <laughs> you'll see a, a Denver Rio Grande, and you'll see a Sumper Valley. Happens to be the model that I liked. We have changed a few things. We built, uh, we changed the Black Rock Mountain. I don't know if you remember from years past, but it used to be we had one track that went over top of the mountain. Now the track that went over the top goes through the middle and there's another track that goes underneath and there's a new sawmill. Oh, sweet. So there's been some additives, additions and over here on this side where Guy is, he's been here every year, but the uh, little uh, coaling station is new too. Yeah, I noticed that's, yeah. uh, that's cool. But or coal. Coal. It's coal. Yeah. It could be cool coal. I thought there's coal. Yes. Yeah. And, and the coal is, in reality, aquarium rock. Oh, okay. Because it's the right size for this half-inch estimated scale that I do. But that's about it. So a few little changes here. A few little changes. The plants have gotten bigger. Yeah. And uh, Lori continues to do the bonsai. And it looks pretty good on that part. Yeah, it's all uh, growing in nice. It's growing in. There's a few... A few uh, more residents over there next to the Indian village. We now have a little uh, Chinese village or uh, uh, town. And since they should get some credit for building the railroad. Absolutely. They just put up a monument somewhere. Yes, they, in fact, they, I think it was in Salt Lake. Yeah, I think that so they, they, the they, state they, they, yes. It's going to be on the Capitol grounds. Yes. They were doing the golden shovel, so maybe next year we'll see the monument. That'll be nice. And our next railroad is the gigantic garden railroad of Tim Fitch. Oh, right. Look at this. I just, this has been years and years in the making, and it's still under construction. Right. But what an absolutely amazing garden railroad. So right now the railroad is actually in two different pieces. There's an entire railroad over here which will eventually connect to the rest of the railroad. But even this section over here is really big. It is, it's huge.
The main part of the railroad is over here and is considerably larger. Right. And over on this section, it'll typically have like three different trains running. Hundreds of feet of track over here. I have no idea how much. And really, really amazing water features. And fire, I mean, goodness. Yes, yeah, so an erupting volcano, yeah. waterfalls, streams, and uh, a bunch of steel bridges crossing over the various streams. It's just ah, stunning and amazing all at the same time. Exactly. Every year that we come here, and we drop in here at least once a year it seems, uh, it's a little different because it's always under construction. Right. And it advances all the time. It's fun to see what the, the new additions are. So what's new this year is uh, the suspension bridge and the waterfall. That was pretty much our season's effort was to get that in place. Uh, and it turned out really good. We're, we're pleased with it. And Things are going good. So did you have somebody build the bridge? Uh, the bridge was built by Eagle Wings Ironcraft, a guy named Dan Hogue out of Phoenix, Arizona. He's done all of my bridges and he's a fantastic craftsman and builds beautiful bridges. <laughs> okay. That's his passion. He loves it. So in this structure, in the Grand Falls Canyon and the waterfall itself, there's uh, 275 bags of concrete, <laughs> which is, I think it equates to 16,500 pounds. Uh, but it's all done, it's not all done at the same time. It's done a bag at a time or two bags at a time. Uh, do a layer uh, in a color and then let it cure and then add on to another layer with a different color and let it cure and so on. So over a process of many months, uh, it, it turns into this kind of a, a waterfall structure. Now, I saw a feature over there that I'm intrigued by, and it's probably a plastic cover for a sprinkling system that looks like a rock. Yes. Is that, did I read that right? You did read it correctly. It's a, a fake rock, and underneath that are five pumps that run the, uh, the waterfall re recirculation, and also there's a sump pump that will drain it uh, when we're not using it. So the bridge is going to connect along back the wall here? Right. The bridge will connect to, uh, it'll, It'll actually spiral down this mesa uh, and connect back up over here on this part of the track. I see. And do the exact opposite on the other mesa and connect to the other loop. So eventually we're going to connect east and west with a golden spike. There you go. <laughs> you little golden spike. Yeah. So big. Yep. That's Might as well plan. get one big that you can put on a plaque somewhere. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Out of real gold. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim has the most amazing collection of uh, locomotives and rolling stock. Boy, I'll say. Just, uh, just, it's, and it's just great to come and see what exactly he's got on the track at any given time. But some of these are pretty amazing. A big boy for Cran. Yes, and the, oh hey, that Denver and Rio Graham kind of looks familiar. Yeah, we're not one of those. Uh -huh. He has the LGB Golden Spike set. Right. Oh man, and when this came out, I was like, oh, we ought to get one of those, and then I saw the price. <laughs> Boy, now this is really a cool idea. They have a Shea, and it's on a display. Boy, that rhymes. <laughs> it does. And it's, uh, it's all uh, digitally controlled, and so you can start and stop it and play the whistle and bell and everything all from these little controllers that are built into the display. And for me, it's just the magical, how that all works. It's just, I'm just fascinated. How can someone not love a shade? Right. Oh, my God. 
Andy has two of these operational pen stamps that actually run on water. Well, and that is just fascinating again for me because I've heard of this. I remember studying it in school, but to see how those work. Yeah, you can see the whole operation and how it rotates the hammers, and it's all 3D printed too. Oh, yes. And uh, just, ah. Oh. And so neat. So he's got one built into the railroad up on the, the mining line, and then one just down here on display because you can't see the one that's up at the mine all that well up at the mill. So he's got one just set up here on the patio so you can see how he runs this whole thing on the water. Right. Can you imagine in real life the noise? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can hear those things for 10 miles away. At least. Anyway, uh, he's got a little description here how the whole thing was made and what it took to 3D print it and everything. Just absolutely a pair of amazing models. So another thing that we've worked on uh, with my neighbor, Ian Howarth, is a new controller uh, that we use at the museum, the Children's Museum in St. George, and also at the Pediatric Waiting Center at the IHC Hospital in St. George. Uh, and what's unique about it is it's a push button start that the kids can push and it has a very slow start and, a, and it will run for a period of time or a number of cycles and then it has a very slow stop. So it's really gentle on the engines and it's more realistic than hard stops and hard starts. So that's been a fun project that, that we've worked on over the last few months. Summer batteries and summer track. So the, the mine train is a, a battery power or a, sorry, track powered. Uh, with the Howarth controller, my neighbor's uh, creation, as is the train uh, on the flat rock with control on the food track. the view from up here. Imagine being able to look out and see Zion Canyon from your backyard. Yeah, it's just right there. Right. And, and as you pan around, over here's one of my favorite places, and that's Warner Valley. Right. These red cliffs, and boy, when the sun hits those red cliffs. And now we're actually looking way off in the distance at the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Isn't that something? <sighs> what a view.
Well, this has been a wonderful St. George trip as always. Oh, I can't wait for next year. <laughs> <laughs> it rolls around every November. It sure does. Anyway, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please become a subscriber. And the easy, easy peasy way to become a subscriber is to click on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday because we're messing around with model railroad electrics. So see you <laughs> we'll then. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.